Hey, all of you plantologists. That's not really a word. <laughs> uh, I'm, guess what I have here? I bet you saw the title and you know. I have a beautiful wisteria plant, and uh, it got away from me really quick, so I am uh, working to retrieve it and grow it onto somewhat of a trellis. Um, did you know that I considered myself at one time, I don't know, 40, 35, 40 years ago to be sort of a botanist? Uh, you know these terms, uh, arborist, botanist, horticulturist, different levels of involvement with the, the plant and tree world. An arborist is a tree surgeon. Did you know that? I guess if you get up in this tree like I do with a chainsaw, you're practicing as an arborist or a tree surgeon. Uh, anyway, lots of different uh, fields in, in this form of life, and, the, and I have a lot of respect for all of them, people who take this up, because it's just, it, it is, this is our natural world, right? So what's going on here, in case you want a little bit of information from me as a homeowner and what I've got, it's a type of wisteria, and I left a tag on it. I paid 24 bucks for this. Uh, okay, 25. Amethyst Falls. I guess that somebody created that variety. Uh, that's an Amethyst Falls wisteria, and I have something really cool to show you in a minute here. Made from a very thick wisteria vine by an artist, an artisan friend of mine from many years ago. Um, but uh, if you want to take a look and see, uh, this, like I said, it's 20, 25 bucks roughly. And what this tag is saying that you want to do, in case you want to go out and buy one of these kinds of wisterias, they like plenty of water for the first year, uh, two times a week. They like, they like to be spaced 10 feet apart, I guess. Cold hardiness is down to, way down sub-zero, down to 29 Celsius. Uh, 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. A fertilization every six to eight weeks. Check, check it out. And I just planted it with, a, I amended the soil a little bit and look how it took off. Now what it did was it wound itself around my fence and I unwound it. And I really think that it will still flourish. Look at all those curls. Can you see all those curls in that vine? That's what I'm going to show you. Those as mature, larger limbs, I'm going to show you a piece of art made with that. So I'm going to keep wrapping this around this thing that I built with some scrap and some new wood. Um, I was thinking about training this vine up here and possibly throwing a leg up to my stairs, but I don't really want to make a mess of this. I think I might want to keep this contained to this area. and let the doves nest in it as they have in my neighbors. He's got a beaut they've got a beautiful wisteria over there. Okay. So, um, the, I had one of these on the farm and it sat in the ground for maybe a year or more before it, before it finally regenerated it. I put it out, of, took it out of the pot. I think I amended the soil, but it just didn't do anything. Probably didn't have just the right nutrients or too much of one or the other. But uh, finally it took off and man, it took over this pine tree. Yeah. Look at this lacing back on itself. It's, uh... Look at it. I may be able to uh, unravel this and uh, wrap it up the trellis, <laughs> but who knows? I might have to go as far as removing a bolt. So let's take a look at that that cool piece of art now. What are you doing now? Making some oatmeal. Oh, you're gonna feed me? Yeah, I kind of screwed That's up. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> That's you, you expecting a bunch of a bunch of boys to come over? No, I just yeah. I screwed up. 
Okay, so this is what I was going to show you. It's dusty, and uh, it's uh, getting getting a little older now. Look at all that dust. i got to clean it. Uh, this was made, it's funny, I call this, I call this guy, I used to call this guy the old guy that works for me. <laughs> you remember? Yep. And you know how old he was? Your age. My age. No way. Yep. Ed was 60 when he started working for us. So nice. Ed carved this beauty. This is a, co a cotton mouth, and he knew that I like snakes. And I, he and I sh had to handle it. He, he brought me a copperhead, and I, I milked the venom out of it and handled it and uh, made some video of it. But this is a, a, this is a cotton mouth or a water moccasin. And uh, he made the fangs. Ed was so creative. He made these fangs out of uh, palm, or either palm or rose, like from a windmill palm frond or a rose. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was palm or palmetto or whatever. But look at that. He painted it, and I can't remember. I think this was the actual limb that this wisteria was climbing up but isn't that fantastic he glued a rubber foot onto it and he of course 45 a piece here so you have a handle and you have a nice walking cane how spectacular is that thank you ed now he would go into the wild and find wisteria growing into huge sizes and choking trees to death like this serpent here so I just thought you guys would get a kick out of that I know a lot of you don't like snakes but don't kill snakes they're part of our environment I'm, I'm not going to tell you don't kill a venomous snake that's in your yard but uh, don't be so so rash and don't be in such a rush to destroy good snakes we really need our snakes because they control our rodent population they keep things in balance is what they do and birds eat them they keep them down they keep their population down plenty enough without our interference i'm not a i'm not a tree hugging hippie but i do understand that nature needs good custodians so be a good custodian and don't don't get hysterical when you see a rat snake uh, we have lots of eastern rats and we have black racers around here and people just flip out you kill a hog nose you're killing an endangered animal that needs your protection not not to be brutalized and butchered so anyway this this quickly devolved into a snake video <laughs> Anyway, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and we will talk soon.